what we're going to be going over here is a deferred tax asset. Now that's where any temporary difference then in reversing itself causes taxable income to be lower than financial or book income here. Now a deferred tax asset, that's referred to as a future deductible amount. So when we're working with these tax uh, deferred taxes here, you want to look at it in terms of your financial accounting here versus your tax accounting and make the comparison. So for, for our example here, we're going to be looking at both an expense item that cause, uh, it would be a deferred tax asset and also a revenue item that would be a, a count for a deferred tax asset. So starting with our expense item here. What we're going to be looking at in this case is we're going to be looking at our timing here and our financial accounting here for this expense that we recognize versus our tax accounting on the expense. So uh, we're going to be looking at four years here, year X1 through year X4. So for our financial accounting, let's just say we have an expense here, or let's just call it a depreciation expense here, and we recognize the entire expense here in the first year here, year X1, 190000 Everything is in thousands here, and nothing is recognized or a zero amount here of expenses recognized in years X2 through X4 here. So this is where we're going to have a temporary difference that's going to reverse it itself. So for tax accounting, same income here, 400000 each year here, but we're going to have depreciate uh, this expense item here, let's just call it again depreciation expense here, nothing in the first year here, zero amount in this first year here, but for the next years X2 through X4, we're going to have some depreciation expense spread out over that. So you can see what's going on here. You're going to have a temporary difference here. We, uh, For financial accounting, we recognize the entire expense here in the first year here. And for tax accounting, well, nothing in the first year here, but uh, we uh, ex recognized an even or a, a certain amount here for the next three years here. So what we're going to be looking at is our uh, taxable amounts here. So for our taxable income, let's just look at that. When we're talking about this deferred tax asset, we're going to be looking at our taxable income. Per, compare at the financial accounting, our taxable income versus our tax accounting, a taxable income here. And what we're going to be looking at is our taxable income for a deferred tax asset is going to, we're going to have lower taxable income here in the later years here for our tax accounting versus our financial accounting. So for our financial accounting, let's just look at our taxable income. First year here, we have 190000 deduction from our income. So our taxable income here is 210000 Tax expense, 30. let's just say it's 30% for each of those years here. So that would be 63,000 here. And then years X2 through, X through X4 here, no deduction for this expense item, the depreciation here, zero amount. So our taxable income, well, we don't have any uh, deduction. So it's taxable income is the $400,000 here. 30% of that, 120,000 here for each of the next three years, X2 through X4. Now, if we go down to our tax accounting, this is where we have this temporary difference that reverses here. Nothing in the first year here, no depreciation or expense item here, but uh, we have these amounts here for the next three years here. So subtracting our expense here, um, 55, Thousand here from the four hundred thousand, we come up with taxable income here three hundred forty-five thousand, and then for the next year here it's going to be three hundred forty thousand, and then three hundred twenty-five thousand for our last year X four. So just our comparing our taxable income here to de determine that it's a deferred tax asset, our taxable income here is lower for our tax accounting here versus our. Uh, financial accounting. So that's the comparison that we want to make. And a deferred tax asset, you're going to have a lower taxable income here in when it, this tax or this uh, expense item reverses itself. This temporary difference reverses itself. So again, we can look at our tax payable here and uh, for our tax accounting versus our tax expense for our financial accounting. Just keep those terms separate here. Financial accounting, that is based on your tax expense. And for tax accounting, you call it a tax payable. That's an important item here. So for our tax expense, well, we calculated here for our financial accounting, we had 63000 uh, for the first year here and 120000 for each of the next three years here. Now for tax accounting, again, we use that 30% here for our our tax rate here. So for our second year here, 
thirty percent of three hundred forty-five thousand, hundred three thousand uh, five hundred dollars. Next year, hundred two thousand, and then the last year here, ninety-seven thousand five hundred. So we're going to have uh, both a lower taxable income here, which results in a lower tax payable here. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at how we would record this here. So this is what we want to be looking at. We're going to have set up a deferred tax asset, this tax payable account here, and also a tax expense here. So let's start with our tax expense here, and we're going to look at it. And tax expense would be on the income statement, and that's for financial accounting. So what we want to do is we just want to go back to our uh, calculations here. So for our tax expense here, years X1, we had that 63,000 here. So we debit or increase our tax expense here by 63,000 or 63 here. And then for each of the next years here, X2 through X4, we would debit or recognize our tax expense here as 120,000 here for the, each of those next three years here. Okay, so now for our tax payable. Well, that comes off our tax accounting forms here again. So our tax payable, we started out with the first year here, credit that here, and that's in a balance on our balance sheet here, and that's for tax accounting. Credit it for 120000 here, and then each of the next uh, three years here, uh, second year here, 103500 credit that, and then our third year here, 102000 and then our last year here, 97000 uh, five here. It should have been 97,005. Okay, so now what you want to do here is you want to look at compare your tax payable versus your tax expense. And what you're going to do here is you're going to, we're going to come up with a deferred tax asset. And that's really um, our, because we have that definition here where our tax, uh, tax, uh, in, taxable income here is lower than our uh, tax, uh, taxable, our taxable income under the tax accounting here is lower than our tax expense here under our financial accounting. So remember what we did here for our tax accounting, what we would do here, we would have credited that for each of those amounts that we went through here. So compare, uh, looking at our first year here, our taxable, tax payable here was 120,000 from our uh, uh, calculations here and our tax expense was 63,000 here. So we had a debit here of 63,000, a credit of 120,000 for our tax payable. So we need a balancing amount and that's going to go to our deferred tax asset debit here for 57 or 57,000. So our debit here 57,000 plus our debit uh, for our tax deferred tax asset here plus our debit here and tax expense of 63,000 balances with our credit amount here for our tax payable here of 120,000. And then for each of the next years here, again, we took it, just do your comparison here. Tax payable, your credit here, 135 versus your debit here of 120. So you need an extra credit here to, for your balancing amount of 16,005. So what you've done here is you've had your debit here and your deferred tax asset, and now it is reversing. You're crediting or reducing your deferred tax asset here by that amount, 16,005. And then for the next years here, just make your comparison between your tax expense and your tax payable here. So what you're in this case, 120 here versus 102. So we have a credit of 102. We need, and versus a debit here of 120. So we need another credit here, a redu reduction in a deferred tax asset here of 18,000. And then the last year here, again, make your debits versus your credits here, and you're gonna need another balancing credit amount here for that last year of 22,500. This 97,2 should have been 97,5. Okay. So now we've set, we've determined our, what our deferred tax asset is, and it reversed itself here. We started out with that 57,000 here, uh, credit amount here, and then we, our debit amount here, and then we credited or reduced their deferred tax asset by the difference between our tax payable and our tax expense. And we credited that here. So at the end here, at the end of the third year here, or the fourth year, we've totally reversed our deferred tax asset. It would have a zero balance. Okay, so so much for our deferred tax asset here. Now let's look at how we record this here. Again, let's first off, let's just go and look at our deferred tax asset. Again, that's any temporary difference that in reversing itself causes taxable income to be lower than financial income. So you can see here, our taxable or tax payable here is, uh, 
what this what we talk here the taxable income tax accounting our tax payable here is lower than our tax expense here for financial accounting so that meets our definition here as a deferred tax asset okay so now let's look at how we'd record this here so we uh, and we're going to be looking at our income tax expense section on the income statement for 20x1. So we start out with our income before taxes. That was at 400000 Now, for our income tax expense, that's going to be broken down be between our current and our deferred portion here. So for our in income tax expense, our current amount here, that's our payable here of 120000 So we had that here. But then our deferred here, that was... 57,000. So we would be subtracting that out because it's a deferred tax asset here. That would be a reduction from our uh, income tax expense. And you can see it up here. You had a credit here of your tax payable here for tax accounting 120,000. And then you had a debit here in the deferred tax asset here uh, of 57,000. So the difference here is going to give us 63,000 here of income tax expense. The deferred asset here. Uh, reduced our current amount here of our tax payable. So again, for our net income, simply the difference between our income tax expense, and that's for this state uh, year here, 20X1 here. It have to be figured out for each of the next four years here. But for 20X1, the net income tax expense is 63,000. Uh, subtract that from our income here, 400,000. So our net income is going to be 337,000. Okay, so we talked about the um, uh, expense item here when we're talking about deferred tax asset. Now let's go up here and let's look at a deferred tax asset in terms of a revenue item here. Again, we have to look at our financial accounting versus our tax accounting. And for our example here, we're going to be recognizing for tax accounting purposes, uh, purposes here, you recognize the revenue when it's received in cash. And for our example, let's just say here, $190,000 would have been received in cash. And for tax accounting, we'd recognize the entire amount of our revenue here in this first year here of at X1 here. And nothing in our next three years here. That's for our example here. Now, for our financial accounting purposes, we recognize the revenue when it was earned or accrued here. And so let's just look at the terms here for the first year here. Let's just say we had nothing here recognized, but we had uh, an amount here for an amount here uh, for each of the next three years, X2 through X4. So this is where we have that temporary difference where it's reversing itself. You can see we recognized our entire revenue here for tax accounting purposes in that first year, nothing in the last years here, but for financial accounting, nothing in the first year here, and we had amounts here for each of the next three years here. So it's actually reversing itself, and that's what we call a deferred tax asset. Now, that's where we're going to have lower taxable income again here. So let's look at our taxable income. For financial accounting, uh, we first no revenue here for the first year here, so our taxable income would have been 400000 here. Tax expense, just use 30000 again, that would be 120000 And now, for revenue, we'd include it, we'd have to increase our income here by the revenue that we earn or recognize in each of the next years here, X2 through X4, and you can see we have an increasing taxable amount here, adding that revenue to our income here before the revenue was recognized here. So we've got taxable income 455000 460 uh, 460000 and 475000 in that last year here. So tax expense, just take 30% of that here, and you can and we come up with our tax expense, uh, tax expense, 30% of our taxable income, we come up with our tax expense here. And then for our tax accounting here, uh, again, all the revenue here was earned in that first year here. So you add that to the income here before 400,000, you're gonna come up with taxable income here of 590,000. And then nothing in the next three years here, so we have taxable income here of 400,000. So what we're talking about again for our tax, uh, def a deferred tax asset. This is where we're gonna have lower taxable income here. You can see it. For our financial accounting, because we recognize that revenue uh, later here, uh, we increased our taxable income here versus our, ta our, our 
taxable income here for financial accounting versus our taxable in here income here for tax accounting. You can see the difference here. So just looking at our tax payable here, well, for our tax accounting purposes, we had that taxable income the first year here, 590,000. Our tax payable, 30% of that is 177,000. And then for the next, each of the next three years here, 30% of the 400 is 120,000 here. So again, our tax payable here is lower than our, uh, for our tax accounting is lower than our tax expense here for financial accounting. Uh, again, because our taxable income here is greater for financial accounting because of this temporary difference. And the temporary difference is reversing itself. So that's what we mean by a deferred tax asset. Now let's go and look at our T accounts here and how we record that here. So again, our looking at our tax expense here on our income statement, we would debit that here or increase that here uh, just based on what we calculated here from our for our financial accounting here, 120,000 for that first year, and then an increasing amount each of the next uh, three years here. Now for our tax payable, that comes off our tax accounting uh, calculations here. First year, 177,000. Credit our tax payable for 177,000. Remember that's on our balance sheet here, and then each of the next three years here, we only had a tax payable of 120,000. Okay, so what you can see here that are, by our definition here, are, well, we can go through the taxes itself here. Now our taxable income was lower, therefore we had a lower amount here of tax payable here versus our tax expense, which had a higher taxable income. So you can do the comparison here. And then for the deferred tax asset, uh, simply look at your credits and debits here. Uh, looking at the first year here, we had a debit here to our cash expense of 120000 and then we had a credit here to our tax payable of 177000 So we're going to need a debit a balance here for that. So that's the deferred tax asset. Debit that here for $57,000. So our debit of 57000 plus our debit of 120000 here in our tax expense, uh, balances with our tax payable here on for our tax accounting 177,000 and then the same here for each of the next 3 years here tax payable 120,000 second year or year here versus 136,000 for our tax expense so we need a in this case this is where we're going to need a credit amount here we got a credit uh, only 120,000 credit here in our tax payable and then versus 136,005 here for a debit. So we're gonna need a crediting amount here for a deferred tax asset of 16,005. So you see what's happening here. You started out with your debit here and deferred tax asset here, and it's reversing itself here. So each of the next years, it's credited out here, uh, reduced here until it gets down to zero, comparing our, and that's really comparing your tax expense here versus your tax payable. Okay. So that's how, when we're talking about these deferred tax assets here, again, uh, where you're going to have a lower taxable income or a tax payable here versus your tax expense for uh, your ter lower tax payable for tax accounting versus your tax expense here for financial accounting. So that's where you're going to get your deferred tax asset. And we looked at it both for the expense and expense item and also a revenue item. So that'll take care of our discussion here on this deferred uh, tax asset.